When it comes to increasing our life satisfaction, we tend to look to external sources. We tend to assume that if we change something externally at a very grandiose or drastic level, that it's going to change how we feel about ourselves and going to increase our levels of fulfillment. And yet one of the most life changing, substantial things that we can do is create a greater understanding and awareness of our internal experience. And when I refer to it in terms experience. I'm talking about um, our emotional sensations. I'm talking about our internal narrative and the rules, the constructs, the stories that we tell ourselves, the beliefs that we have, the theories and the speculations that we create and the way we live our lives as a result. Because again, we tend to assume that we're very aware, that you know we're very conscious. And the reality is we Ardent. A huge amount of what we do, what we say, what we think on a daily basis is at an automated level. We're on autopilot and we don't even know it. And consequently, we allow these stories to be created and we live by very rigid rules that we're not aware of. And these are a consequence of our upbringing and the culture that we live in. However, they're not always beneficial. And I suppose with any client, the journey starts with the emotional side of things. You need to recognize your emotional experience and the sensations that the emotions cause in your body. And this helps you then to recognize triggers, which for a lot of people are hugely problematic because they feel intolerable. But once you identify where the source of that trigger is, you know, once you're able to understand that it may not necessarily be relevant to your day to day life, it can really alter the way in which you engage with people, particularly in your relationships, because that's where our triggers tend to cause us the most problems. So it's learning to tolerate the sensations that come with our emotions, but also learning to regulate them in a very soothing, caring and compassionate manner. And then you look to your thought process. You know, again, as I said, we have this ongoing internal narrative telling us about the world, telling us about ourselves, telling us about other people. And it tends to be extremely punitive and critical, tends to be very, very entitled tends to assume that everything is everybody else's fault, that's very critical, it thinks that everything that it thinks is factual and you know it makes life really difficult because again you're going around the place listening to this harshness all of the time you're judgmental of yourself you're judgmental of other people and it's just about recognizing that this is what you're listening to all day long without even being aware of it because again it happens at an automated level and if you grew up with a lot of criticism it's going to be a lot harsher a voice that you hear in the in your head but the reality is we all tend to think quite negatively and no amount of positive thinking or affirmations are really going to change that until we learn to tackle the emotional side of things and until we look at our actual beliefs. Because again, when you try to completely alter a thought by just replacing it with something positive, all you're actually doing is reaffirming the negative thought that you had to begin with. It's like asking yourself not to think about pink elephants. The first thing that comes into your mind is pink elephants you know so it's about recognizing that sometimes positive thinking has a place and affirmations are helpful but only if they come from a place of actual belief something that you find credible because again your brain has very very rigid beliefs already ingrained and removing them is not going to be the most simple thing you're ever going to do. It takes a lot of consistency, it takes a lot of compassion and it takes a lot of desire and willingness to challenge it because again you have to understand how much these are factual to you you know, and how attached you are to them. Because again, when we start to question our beliefs, when we start to question our patterns, we're actually questioning our entire identity. And that can be pretty goddamn scary. So it's usually better done all of this work with the help of a therapist, because then you can kind of tackle it in a very compassionate, very gentle manner, as opposed to pulling your life to shreds and all of a sudden not knowing who you actually are anymore 
more and that's what you know the journey of self-awareness is it's recognizing that you don't really know who you are because again we have all of these stories in our head we have all of this stuff going on that we don't even check in on on a regular basis and that's part of the work that I do basically getting people to pause every so often and ask themselves okay what story am I telling myself right now what pattern am I repeating that I have repeated throughout my life and that clearly hasn't been working for me and yet I am so so attached to it I hold on to it so much so that I don't even realize half the time that I'm doing it and it's about recognizing that you can't just kind of rush in there and alter everything that you have ever learned everything that you have ever known it's very much an incremental process and it's something that you have to come back to again and again and again and there's going to be setbacks and there's going to be failures and that's part and parcel of it I mean that is the actual process but I suppose the more discerning we can get with our paradigms and our constructs the better off we're going to be and it's about listening for that narrative it's about you know tapping into the story you tell yourself because oftentimes just say for example your partner might be home late and if at any stage when you were growing up uh, a parent was late in collecting you and when you're a kid you tend to kind of associate very strong emotions with certain events so a parent was late to collect you and you were like oh my god they mustn't love me and all of a sudden that becomes your belief about life and again this is a very general example but when your partner is late you make that very personal and it's like okay underneath whatever story it is that you're telling yourself there is this little child going they don't love me and even though you may not even be aware of it what it means is that at some level you are listening to that story and you're getting angry and you're getting resentful and then when your partner finally does come home you lose the plot so it's recognizing as I said how these things work and how they work against you and it's continuously learning to feel the feeling and then check in with the story. So by checking in with the story, you basically ask yourself, okay, what is it that I'm actually telling myself here? You know, and then asking yourself the question, is it true? Is it helpful? And generally, when you first start asking this question, you'll be like, yes, it is true. And yes, it is helpful. But if you tease through it a little bit more, particularly if the thought is very distressing, you're possibly going to find that if you had to stand up in a court of law, that perhaps there is a little bit of a hole in what it is that you're telling yourself, the story that you're telling yourself. Now, they may, may not always be the case, but generally the, the stories that we tell ourselves, they're not really concrete facts you know and it's about looking at that because even the way we talk about ourselves we make assumptions about ourselves you know oh I could never do x y or z or I should be x y or z or I need to look like x y or z and if you think about these things I mean by you saying all oh, right I could never do something I mean if somebody give you a million euro in the morning to do this thing you do it in the story so you know it's this kind of blatant uh, generalization that you make and it becomes one of your rules and again you live your life out according to that rule and you generate patterns out of what it is that you believe and again as I said that can be so restrictive so it's asking yourself okay what impact does me believing this thought have on me and what impact does it have on others and even go one step further and ask other people okay here's what I believe how does that make you feel and the more you begin to I suppose find confounding evidence to your beliefs the better off you're going to be because again our brain is fabulous at finding evidence for its stories um, when we don't try challenge it so it's about looking for counter evidence uh, trying to find ways of challenging your perspective seeing things from another per person's perspective applying curiosity and asking yourself is there a better possible way to live what would my life be like if I didn't believe this story how would I feel how would other people feel and then pushing effective action in place and I suppose it's kind of emotion thought 
action kind of looking at all of those areas and trying to work on them as a unit and recognizing that this isn't going to be something that you're going to get off the bat you have to repeat it again and again and you may not necessarily see the results immediately but you will see them i hope everyone is having a great day i'll talk to you again soon